Good day, folks, and welcome to Reporting Basics. We're all set to, to begin our four-part series here on reporting, and today is all about the basics, functions and expression boxes and bands and all sorts of good things. So without further chatter, let me turn it over to Chuck. Let me get the presenter. There you go, Chuck. The screen should be yours. I should be up. You should see our topic today, which is cooking with Chuck. I, uh, again, kind of like the uh, the cooking approach because the whole idea is that uh, when we're doing reports, it's basically we're letting you control what goes in. Uh, most of you run reports that are, I guess you might say, um, the, the basics would be the uh, TV dinner type or microwave where you warm it up. Well, today we'll talk about giving you the skills and showing you how you can actually modify your own recipes, make those gourmet reports that uh, you dream about. <clears throat> so we're going to have a lot to cover. Reminder, this is a 90-minute uh, session, so I hope you've uh, taken care of essentials, uh, got a snack, or made the little trip to the room down the hall. Um, we'll try to take a little bit of a two-second break or a two-minute break in the middle, perhaps, but we're going to be moving pretty fast. We're going to cover, review again, the table names and data structure to really identify, if you would, those ingredients that are part of a report. And then, obviously, we're going to finally get to turn on the Modify Reports tool. A couple of tips on that. Number one, of course, to remind you is we always start pretty much with an existing report. Unlike uh, those who have actually done report editing with Access or FileMaker or uh, where you can start with a blank slate, uh, Student Manager pretty much lets you start with some kind of base recipe and then you can freeform from there. Uh, we're really focusing today on the report designer, looking at the tools that we've got available to work with. We'll cover the controls, expression box, functions, banding, and uh, the goal is to try to give us enough time at the end of the day to be able to look at some examples, and then I'll close with my, ex my recommendations for kind of, if you would, the uh, nutrition building blocks, if you're into human nutrition, what I think are the most uh, basic reports that most everybody needs to know and get familiar with and understand how they work. So, Lori, uh, let's just keep on going here. Um, report ingredients, and again, as, as part of understanding what is the basic report cooking, reporting, modifying that's in the system, we'll need to know, you'll need to know about database files and fields in Student Manager. We've talked about the files before, but in Manager, one of the things that we'll look at and we'll be able to see is that the first two digits of a field name when we start to add field names to the report, represent the first uh, couple of letters of the report table or the table, database table that it's from. And so you kind of note the common kind of, I guess, field naming model. Uh, and once you get that down, you'll be able to um, uh, come through. Okay, Lori, we, 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 we get in troubles with our audio, or are we doing okay? We're having a little bit of trouble with the phone line dialing in. I've got eight or nine people who are telling me that they need to dial in again, and I'm sending them a chat that says, keep trying, because I'm hearing back from five or six of those already that say, yeah, the next time we tried it, it worked fine. Okay, very good. So again, the tip is if you, <laughs> I guess if you can hear this, you are um, you are in there. Do you need to take control and send a chat to everybody, or you've done that, Lori? I, I've done that. I'm going to send a, an, another one just to make sure they have the right number. Okay. I guess it's kind of like uh, uh, send me an email if you get this one. Uh, yeah. Kind of response. <laughs> okay. Um, moving on. So the data structure. Uh, to th there are several resources available to you, and again, most of those in the help guide. Uh, one of the help guide elements is the data structure table, uh, which gives a dis complete description of the data table. And that's basically in the help guide. If you go to student manager, go to reporting, and then at the bottom there is a book called data tables. Uh, alphabetically, so now we see the data structures of all the tables and 
uh, if we go down to courses, we'll see all the individual elements in that. All right, there's one resource. The other resource, again, within the help guide, whoops, within the help guide, whoops, again, is the screen layout. And the screen layout is really the neatest thing ever. And uh, this goes back to uh, Cheryl and our, our documentation screen, uh, queen. But from the help guide, you'll see screen layout. And there you just click on whatever screen you're interested in. And we'll look at name. And it gives you a picture, eventually, if I quit clicking, of the uh, name screen. And if I wanted to know what the exact field name was for salutation, I hover over it and get a uh, drop or a call out. The field name is NMSALUT. Uh, if I wanted to go to additional info and see what's back there, I'll click on additional info. And then again, I can hover over the field and it'll tell me the name NUDFC1 or click and it'll tell us a little bit more. It, it clarifies whether it's character, number, logical, and its exact length. So again, a great resource uh, as we begin to move down the road for the uh, report uh, tool. To modify a report, well, you navigate to the appropriate report area, which we've kind of covered or yesterday or last week in the session, and now you can finally check the modify report options. And again, if you had if you had selected additional reports, um, let me get my pointer back. If you had selected additional reports as you were setting up your uh, report, uh, you'll have the option when you um, go back to, when you hit OK to go on, uh, you will need to select the report from the user-defined list. At that point, the report will then open in modify mode. And now I see we have a poll question. Lori, take it away. We do. We have a poll question. We want to know how many folks have actually ever attempted to modify a report. So you have choices here, as always. No, you've never tried. The report designer scared you and you left. That you've modified a few, more than a few, and then over 10. So if you would please cast your ballot. looks like most everybody has tried at least one or two. Which good enough. Is good. good enough. Yeah. So we don't have a lot of complete uh, greenhorns in this bunch. Yeah. And I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. Okay. And I'll show you the results. Well, we have a lot of professionals here. So, boy, we, we needed to make a few more presenters, Lori, and have these folks uh, give the rest of the session. Hey, so. Let's just sit down. <laughs> okay. Well, let's keep going then. All right, now I, this is a sidebar here because one of the things I have a big beef about is, again, trying to run Student Manager in a smaller screen res. And when we say smaller, we mean the bigger the numbers in your screen resolution, um, I think the better because it basically gives you more room to see what's out there. Uh, as a minimum, we recommend the 1078 by 768. And again, if you're not sure how to set up screen resolution, talk to your tech either at Aceware or your local computer expert there at your office. And again, if you can't get a screen uh, monitor, that, if you can't get your resolution that small, uh, hit up the boss for a bigger monitor and we'll help you uh, support that. Now we're going to show a couple examples of the two different sizes. This is what I say bad. Now we're looking at the courses with fee detail and you'll note that uh, this is a, we just barely see the right margin. We don't see at the bottom here, we're not seeing the rest of the bands in the report. Now I'll go to the next page. And this is better. Now this is a fairly high 1280 by 1040, but you'll note that we can see the right margin, so we know where the right margin is, and we can see all of the bands in the report. Well, I'll go back now, compare this to this, where we don't see the bands and we're not sure where our right margin is. Now again, there are scroll bars that allow you to scroll up and down, 
But again, you just don't see as much, and you really want to try to aim for as high a resolution as your eyes and your monitor can comfortably handle. Okay, so now we're looking at a class roster template. And let's take a look at the components of the template. And as far as now we're actually getting to review the tools that we've got to work with. One thing to note is that when you go to report modify mode, your menu item bar at the top changes. And we'll talk about that in a minute. You'll note that we have a set of report controls toolbar and we have a report elements toolbar. I guess we call these controls and these elements, they're all tools that we use in reporting. Now, one of the things to note, okay, we'll cover the report controls. Uh, the, the different elements, uh, the data grouping tool allows us to do grouping. Data environment allows us to, a cheat sheet to see what fields are available to the report cursor. Page sets up, sets up our page size. Uh, landscape portrait, if we have a special paper size we're dealing with. Report controls, color palette, and again, we'll be talking about the color palette quite a bit next week when we talk about aesthetics, as well as layout and, of course, font properties. So those are report controls. Now the next group, the command bar menu, indicates the kind of things those new menu bar, the menu items on the top of the report do. File gives us close, edit, copy, paste, select. The view is really not functional for us. Format, there's a lot of things in here, alignment and sizing options. One of the things you'll note as you work with reports is that some of the items under format are also available on the toolbar icons. Uh, tools, again, no tools. Report banding, uh, data variables. When we start to talk about um, the advanced or intermediate and advanced, we'll be getting into variables. Uh, and uh, again, the default font for report. We want to go back to that, but that's under report. Window, the report window, and accessing report help. Lori, I'll breathe and ask if there's any emerging questions or timely notes to make. I don't believe so. I think you're right on track. All right. Let's keep on going. So the report control toolbar. This is probably where 90-some percent of report work will be done is with the report control toolbar. And, at, you know, the tools are fairly self-explanatory. The pointer, which lets you select items, the text entry tool, the expression data box, the line drawing, square box tool, rectangle tool, and the picture tool, and the button lock tool. And we'll want to make sure we identify how that works because that, that is a very handy tool, especially if you're doing major editing and want to select multiple items uh, or for, for editing at one time. Now, I had a thought here, and it's gone away, so we'll keep on rolling. Chuck, as, yes. lo as long as you're kind of thinking about things, can you go to the live student manager and show the folks that one can, one icon on the toolbar opens up that report control toolbar, that there is an icon to open that? Oh, there is one on that? Okay. Well, can you hold that thought until we get, sure. get to that then? Okay. Um, docking a floating toolbar. And again, if you uh, haven't done much modification or if you blow your user preferences away, when you open up a report, you may end up finding a toolbar that is floating. And um, some people like that. I prefer docking all of the toolbars. And again, to dock it, click on the blue header where it says Report Control, and just click and drag it and drop it in the header bar, and that will then dock it in the, uh, in the toolbar. Uh, again, that is a personal preference, but um, I think it's it's going to be better served by keeping it up in the docked area and you don't have to search for it hidden among the objects on your report. Um, floating toolbars, and again, if you accidentally, uh, or you're, you're trying to get out and you hit the X bar on the, uh, the X button on a toolbar, that will actually remove that toolbar from your reports area. And Student Manager has a user file that it uses, which is your user logon and the letters RP, that it saves these preferences. 
Uh, so that's actually a feature rather than a bug, but if you did the wrong thing, you don't like it. So to reset that, what you need to do is that you would need to, again, close Student Manager, go into the Student Manager folder, and delete the user file that has the RP at the end of it. There's a DBF and an RPT. When you delete that and the user goes back and logs in, they'll get a fresh set of preferences. I'm going to pause a second if that doesn't scare up some questions. Well, folks have not had time to submit any questions on that yet, so I'm going to say... You're seriously trying to keep up. Okay, <laughs> well, we'll just keep on going. Uh, adding text entries. Again, the text entry tool is clicking the A text bar, blinking cursor, and you begin typing. We're going to go through these fairly fast because we'll go back to the actual report and, and work with that. The expression box, which is the AB tool, and um, the AB tool allows you to, I'm going to change my, to a spotlight here. The AB tool um, allows you to create an expression box, and what you need to do is that when you click on it, um, your, your mouse becomes a crosshairs. You move into the report where you want it to um, appear, click and then drag and drop, or click and drag to make a box the size that you want, and then it will um, uh, it be there. So once you do that, the next step is that you get a ex report expression window uh, where you actually can then type into uh, an expression box or click the ellipsis if you've set up the uh, uh, report environment. There are format options, um, and let's see if I've got some other elements on here. Hang on a second. I'm thinking, yeah, there we go. I knew I had some toys in here. A couple of other elements here that we'll be covering eventually is uh, the field position, which lets you manage the relative position of a field. Uh, the stretch with overflow option, which allows you to have a variable size data field, like a course title, and let it stretch to wrap between multiple lines if you've got a long one. And then finally, there is a print when area. Uh, that allows conditional display of data. And that brings in some rather unique and special uh, tools that you can make some good use of in modifying reports. OK. Uh, and here we're back to the expression box. You type the field name in, and it appears in the window. The data environment tool uh, is that if you click on the data environment button, in your menu bar, you actually get a data environment pick list of all the fields in the system. And again, I have no idea. Sometimes you'll see one, two, three, maybe four of these. They're all the same. Just pick one, look up the field you want, and you can click and drag it into the report window. Now, one note is, when you do that, the field name of that field is also carried into the report. And most of the time, you don't want that, and you would probably delete it before you uh, move on. OK, how are we doing so far, Lori? So far, so good. And my applause, you're getting much better at PowerPoint. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, Lori's been a good teacher. So uh, report functions. And again, we'll talk about functions in a bit more here. But um, you can't do reports in Student Manager without really uh, taking advantage of the functions, or I should say you can't do reports well or efficiently without taking advantage of the functions. So um, let's see about uh, what a function example is. Well, one is nice date, which returns the date instead of, you know, year, year, month, month, day, 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 or year, what, month, month, slash, day, day, slash, year, year, year. It spells it out, January, February, seventh comma and the year. So where do you find the functions? As you might guess, they're in the help guide. So if we move to the help guide and we go to student manager report functions, we have a complete list of all the functions. 
and again, um, there is a description set which gives you a quick thumbnail of what the function does. Um, if you click on the function itself, you'll get a full detailed element of how that function works. And in fact, you even have the ability to copy a function from one of the examples and paste it into your, into your report. Okay. Functions. My favorite functions, and again, there are over a hundred functions, but some of the real basic ones that most everyone, I think, will find some use for are your add functions. Um, add a pay, course, reg, name, and teach. Well, as you might guess, it's from the pay table, the class, the registration, the name, and the teacher file. What these allow you to do is that if you're in a report and you need a field from the register table and you can't find it in the native fields, you can use one of these add functions, or I call them gopher functions, to go get or go for a field from the registration record uh, that as long as you've got a reference as to the course number and the ID number of, of the record you want. Okay, formatting functions. Uh, CZSR is a city-state zip formatter. Namer is a way to format a full name of a student without having to add the individual four or five elements that make up a full name. Nice date we gave an example of before. And show phone is one that allows you to have a nicely formatted phone number. Because in manager, the phone numbers are actually stored with no spaces or dashes. Some special purpose functions, and there are so many of these that can be used in reports and in, in, in student manager, uh, is an age function, which will give you in years how old a person is based on their date of birth. Quick code, which allows you to get a description of a code uh, based on the code value. So if the interest code COMP, and you wanted to know if that stood for computers or communication or um, computational skills, uh, you could use quick code, and it would return the uh, descriptor of it. And WASIS is a function on, that is used in reports to be able to let you indicate which query you used to generate the data in that report. And we'll hopefully have time to cover some of these in our examples. Lori, how's the question on text coming? We're doing very well. OK, report banding. Uh, when, we're, when you're modifying reports, the report bands are very critical in making things look the way you want and to have the data turn out in the order that you want. A couple of things to keep in mind. Um, get back to that. Report, there are two ways to do, there are two general types of bands. Uh, there are some bands that are kind of generic to the way a page is laid out. And again, for those of you who, uh, uh, people ask me, how do you learn more about report writing? Well, you're here learning, that's one reason. But the other way away is just basic uh, template layout. Report writing in Student Manager is very similar to desktop publishing. So if you've got any introduction to desktop publishing classes that you offer on campus there, take advantage of those, because I think they'll help you a great deal with the tools and the uh, objects that you work with in the Student Manager Report Writer. And again, so some of these, they have to do with the title of the a title band, a page header band, a summary band, and then the bands that allow you to format information within the data. OK, so let's move on to that, what we're talking about. So now we're looking at a report set of bands with no elements in them, but a title band appears, and I think we've got actual instructions as to what they do here. The title band is the information at the beginning of a report. So if you could have a cover page. A page header appears at the top of every single page in the report. And again, there are ways to say only print on page one, etc. Group headers, printing at the beginning of data groups. Detail lines, which is the finest level of detail of the report. Group footer, which prints at the end. Uh, this is great for putting in like the subtotals. If you wanted a subtotal of the number of classes a person has taken, 
it would go in the group footer for that student uh, record. Page footer at the bottom of a page, and then a summary which is only printed once at the conclusion of the entire report. And again, there are some default bands that you cannot remove. Some of these other bands are ones that you actually can remove, if you'll note clear down at the bottom here. Okay, let's keep going. Title and summary bands, and again, uh, from the report toolbar, if you click report title summary, you have the option to include a title band or a summary band. And when you do that, you'll also note you can make that on a new page or not. <clears throat> so if you wanted to actually have a title, a title for a report that was on a page all by itself, or a summary of a page all by itself, you could click the new page, and that would uh, take care of that. Grouping bands. Um, the grouping band icon, and let's jump back to that real quickly to, uh, well, I'm going to have to modify, so we'll go back to the show. The data grouping icon, which we'll re-review -re for you, and then you can enter the expression on which to group. And again, we'll talk about grouping. You've got to be careful about bands because you can't change, you can't change a group band uh, without changing the sort order of a report. Now, I'm going to get to that here. Uh, the raw ingredients of a report. If you're going to cook, you need to know what ingredients you have to work with. Well, the raw ingredients of any report is a set of data records. The set of data records that you have, we refer to as a report cursor. And just think of a cursor as a temporary file, or in, I guess our case, a mixing bowl. So in that mixing bowl, we have rows of data. And the detail of this row is what we mentioned about the finite detail. This happens to be a set of data from a deadbeat report. You'll note in here that we have name information, and we see some course information. Well, there's also uh, course master record and um, location records and uh, the, I think, name user-defined records. But what you'll note is Bobby Anderson, the name information for Bobby Anderson is repeated here. And we'll note over at the registration course numbers, those are not so that the finest level of detail on the deadbeat report happens to be the course number or the cl or the registration record of the class so that and the sort order it is sorted by alphabetical by last name is the primary sort alphabetical by course number is the secondary sort so again when you're dealing with banding in a report You've got to make sure you can't uh, you can't change the band sequence here. You can change it, but it won't give you correct data unless you verify that the sort order of the raw data inside the cursor, your mixing bowl, kind of like adding ingredients in the proper order, I guess, if you're cooking. Uh, you've got to make sure those follow. Okay, I'm going to pause a second here while we remind you what we just said. Anything going on, Lori? Nope, I think we're good. We've either got them totally confused or this is just a bright bunch. Um, okay, so again, as we said, the ingredients must match. The order of the report cursor must match or must be compatible with the banding of the report. And again, a couple of notes. Every report area in Student Manager, and now I can jump back and actually show you, when you go to Student Manager, each one of these different report areas has most likely a different sort order in terms of how the records are sorted um, by default. As we showed last week, some report areas actually offer a sort order on the fly option. Uh, other report areas, if we go to my favorite deadbeat, uh, it does not have a, a, a sort order ability directly on the report. Uh, there is a way that you can change the sort order of this report, and that involves using just do it's, which we will cover in the intermediate section. 
Okay, let's get back to our shoe. Uh, and again, as we've reiterated, if you change a sort order in a report, your bands must also change. Uh, the one caveat that might not apply is that in a, in a report like um, CEU reports, course CEUs, or labels, where you really only have one layer of information, then when you change a sort order, typically your band will, um, you, you wouldn't have to worry about the band. Uh, you probably don't use bands in that case. Okay, let's go next. Details matter, and again, in, in talking about the detail band in a report, uh, which we mentioned in the in the main bands, the detail band in, in when you're when you're getting data out in a report represents the most finite, the finest, I guess the the least common denominator level of a report. Uh, and again, different reports have different levels of detail. In the deadbeat report, the detail is at the registration record level. So again, uh, people say, well, why is Chuck so infatuated with reports, the deadbeat report? Well, because most of the time in continuing ed, we want to know information about the registrations. How many registrations per student? How many registrations per firm? You know, how many registrations came in between one date and the other date? Well, Deadbeat provides a way to do that, and I know when I'm dealing with Deadbeat reports that each individual row in that Deadbeat area is a registration. So I can sort and I can count. It gives you some great tools for, for when we're doing subtotals um, to be able to know that. In rosters, the regular name roster from the ro registration roster's name roster, the detail is actually at the optional fee level, and we'll take a look at that in our example. In mailing labels, the detail is at the name level. The mailing label report, uh, if you, as you know, no matter what you use for a query, if you said, well, we want names who have taken course A or B or G, or they're from Nebraska, or they're from Kansas, or whatever, we will only get one name per record, and we have one row for every unique name in the system. Courses, courses and CEUs. The detail there is at the individual level course. There is only one row in the report for every unique course. Courses with fees, however, the detail is course fees. So again, I'm going to take a breath and see if there's any chatter going on, Lori. Uh, folks would like you to demo the functions and to talk a little bit more about sort order, but I think we'll do that when you do the demo Yeah, I think stuff. We'll, we'll hit that as we go. That's the good questions, though. We'll hang on to them. Okay. Um, uh, incidentally, Lori, we could probably do an entire hour on functions, which we probably ought to put down the list sometime. Okay, we're going to take a look at, uh, we're actually at the report quick case study, so boy, talk about timing here. Uh, let's go into the report system and let's talk about a name roster that shows, uh, well, let's say name, their gender, their age, and the county, and we want it in landscape mode for whatever reason. Okay, uh, so I think we're ready to actually jump into the live one. Any uh, things new there, Lori? We can move on? No, nope, we're good. All righty, let's go into that. And so uh, that was deadbeat. Let's... Um, cancel this, and let's go to rosters, reports, demo, uh, registrations, rosters, name roster. And again, for those of you that are paying attention, you'll note there's a shortcut. With all my navigating, control R, if I just remembered that and press control R, bam, I'm at the course roster screen. So we're going to modify this course roster. And I'm, I don't want canceled records. I don't want billing only records. Uh, I am going to show waitlisted registrations, and we're going to do course number begins with, and let's see if I remembered my course. No, I didn't, so I need 07MIS405. Whoa, I could get that course number right. 07, I think it's FMIS405. Ah, We've got the right code. If 
Funny how those computers are picky about that. Okay, so now we're looking at the base report real time. And again, to kind of clarify where we were in the routine, I'm not going to move the mouse. It dims the screen, apparently. So here is the report elements toolbar. <clears throat> and if you hover over them, you'll get a little call out of what it is. There's the data grouping for banding. There's the data environment, the page setup, control toolbar, the uh, color palette, the layout, and again, color palette and layout we'll be covering tomorrow. Uh, report controls, is that the one, Lori, that if we delete this, you're saying it'll bring it back? Yes. Or it will, okay. Um, so, and then moving on now, these are the report elements toolbar. And again, as we hover over them, <clears throat> the default, which is the pointer, which lets us select things. There is our label maker or inserting text. <clears throat> this is our field, our expression builder, line drawing, boxes, uh, rounded boxes, pictures, and the lock mode. Um, let's talk about now what things are on the cursor. Well, let's keep on going down here, I guess. The gray areas, or depending on your screen colors, um, maybe fawn, these are bands. And so there you see... I'm um, going the wrong direction here. Page header. <clears throat> There's a group header for the course. And again, the way the headers work is that it is the stuff above them that is composed of the page header. So for the group header of this course, there is no, um, there is no data on this particular uh, uh, report related to the course itself. Uh, on the... Um, there's a waitlisted group. This is the group header for uh, the name record, and you'll see RGID, and then the detail. Well, there's your detail. On rosters, it is optional fees. Uh, the group footer, uh, and again, let's, let's talk about the idea of the group header. Um, I'm going to actually now <clears throat> jump to the raw data behind this report. So I'm going to pull a little magical tool here. Now, I jump to the raw data. This is the ingredients list for this particular report. Now, I only ran it for one course. It happens to sort by course number, and then by last name, and then by uh, the registration fees. <clears throat> so this is all one course. We're going to go over and look for student information. And we see we've got registration data here. Well, all the, re the registration data tells us the information about the fee that was charged, when it was added, <clears throat> the hours in the CEUs. And then here we have the um, fee descriptions, optional fees descriptions on that. And if we go across, we're looking for the name. And now we see that we've got a couple of names that are listed in here twice. Well, the reason for that is that we have more than one optional fee for that particular person. So that we've got to be careful so that we wouldn't show the name twice in the report because that's not what we want. Okay, I'm going to escape and go back to the report. <clears throat> so when we preview the report, and I will go to the preview tool, which is File, Print Preview, or if you'll know, Control-I is a shortcut. This will let you, while you're in the middle of a report, preview to see what you're doing if you're modifying as you go. Uh, and you'll note here that we only see Bobby's name once, but we see the two optional fees. Let's move things around a bit and see what happens when we um, move the name of the person down into the detail line. So if I'll just click on it, and drag and drop it. And again, that's how you move an element from one area to the other. Uh, I have my report select object tool. I just click and drag. Now I'm going to preview again using control I as my shortcut. And now you'll see Bobby Anderson. He's not showing up twice. Let me double check here. Print when. Oh. Okay, this is an illustration which had snuck up on me. Um, 
what I did was this this um, element, the, the expression box, was created with the expression box tool or the field tool to look at the properties of a element you point to it and double click that brings up the properties of that particular object this is the report expression properties I'm going to cancel that if I point to a piece of text and double click it gets me to the properties of it as far as how it is positioned on the report and my print win options the other things you can do, and this is, um, we're, we're headed toward my print win issue, why it was only showing up once. But when you select an object, you'll note that the format tools are live up on the top of the menu bar. I'm going to click out of that, so nothing is selected on here. And when I click format, there's not much I can do here, because I haven't selected anything to format. Okay, so now let's go back to our expression of the name. And now I double click to get to the report expression. And it was only showing up once. And I told you it should be there twice. Well, I'm going to click the print when. And you'll note the print when has a property that says print repeated values, yes or no. I'm going to answer yes. I'm going to save this do my preview, control I, and now you'll see Bobby Anderson, Bobby Anderson. And so that is what the benefit of a header is, is that you can put an element in the header, I'm going to preview again, I've moved it back where it was, put the element in the header, and it only prints once. So until that name changes, it will only print once. We've shown an option, we've shown the detail of an option, we're now at another line of data with a different name, and so it prints again. And so that's how the banding affects the way things are displayed. I'm going to close my preview. Now again, the, the footer line, the footer line on a report prints data when you leave the information related to whatever we're looking at, which is RGID, or basically the unique identifier for a given name so that this will show me the fees and the options paid for a given person when I leave their record. Let's go back and look at the report. So that for Bobby Anderson, we only print his name and uh, demographic information once going into this uh, set of listings of Bobby Anderson in the report, and when we leave Bobby Anderson, we do the subtotals. <clears throat> and that's where we get our balance dues uh, to to get subtotals for a given uh, person. Uh, and then down at the bottom, you'll see group footer for the course. We didn't have anything different for the uh, group header for this course, but in the group footer, we put in our grand totals for uh, optional fees, uh, total paid, and the total fees. Uh, and that will only show at the end of the report. Let's preview again, Control I. And so if you scroll to the bottom, we'll see the grand totals only appear at the very last of the report. All right, Lori, I'm going to pause, and uh, we'll get back to our example of what we wanted to do with this report. But any? Uh, no, no questions that we want to tackle at the moment. All right. <laughs> uh, so there are lots, but uh, Lori just wasn't, doesn't want me to, to scare me with them. Uh, one other thing, a couple other things that I need to clarify or to make sure you guys recognize. Um, there are a couple of global variables that are available to you in the report writer. One of them is the current date field, and that is uh, identified by the words D, uh, the letters D A T E and an open close parens. Wherever you put that on a report, it will use your computer system date and put that on your on your page. The other one is underscore P-A-G-E-N-O. The underscore page no prints the page number on a report so that you can have page numbers on a report. And I'll go ahead and illustrate the print when. The print when on this is set up to say only print the page number when you are 
greater than one. In other words, this example will not print the page number on the first page. It only prints it on pages 2 through 99,999. Okay, um, while we're looking at the date, <clears throat> let's go ahead and make that instead of a date that is, let's go back here, month, month, day, day, year, 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 let's make it a nice date. So what we'll do is make a new expression. We click the expression box. The mouse becomes a crosshairs. I'll just go above that, drag, and move over, and let go. <clears throat> and the box doesn't show yet, but I'm at the report expression. Well, at this point, I've got a couple of options. If I know exactly what I want to type, I could type it in. Well, I don't, but I know it has something to do that they talked about a nice date function. So I'm going to go to my report functions, look up nice date, and then I'm looking at, ex oh, here it is, nice date, co -beg date. That's how you do that. Well, I'm going to highlight it, copy this, I can go back to my report and paste it in. And you can't right mouse click and paste, but you can use the control V. And that pasted in the function from my um, help guide. Well, except that I've got to get rid of Kobeg date because that's the beginning date. I don't want that. I want date. Open close paren. And I test that again now. And now it starts to print the date, February 7th, comma, uh. okay, what's going on here? Can somebody there who's paying attention give me a two-word uh, suggestion as to how can Chuck solve his problem with the date going February 7th? Uh. So we'll let you, uh, the whiz kids there, give me an idea of what I should do with this box. And it all has to do with real estate. Real estate, real estate, and real estate. Well, there's lots of ways to express this, apparently. We've got lengthen, right. enlarge, stretch, Very resize, good. Those, they're, those are all <laughs> correct. So what they're, what they're saying, and everybody may know this, that when you put an expression box on a screen and you're using a function, it doesn't necessarily know how big to make the box. And so... What you must do is click on the box to select it. When you select an object, an expression field, or a data field, you'll see there are six little black boxes, or actually eight little black boxes that are drag bars that appear on that. You can click on the top one and make it larger. You can, I'll undo that, and the undo option is always available to you. Or you can click on a corner bar and drag the whole thing bigger. I don't want to do that. Or what we want to do is click in the middle bar on the right-hand side, and now you'll see it become a stretch. And I'll drag it out until it's larger. I'll preview, and voila, now we've got enough space in the real estate there to show the entire length of the data. So again, good job, class. Uh, the other way to do this, if you're dealing with boxes, and um, I'm going to look at this one, if I wanted to go in and make this box wider, and I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stutter-stepping with the width, uh, rather than using the, the mouse to drag, when you select a box, one of the tricks is to hold the shift key down and then press your right arrow key, and now watch the right side, watch the right side of this box. Shift right arrow, I've got to click in to select it. Shift right arrow, and you'll see the right margin just slowly edge itself to the right. Shift left arrow, and the right margin goes in the other direction. Now, the same thing applies for a height. Uh, the height there's not much to work with. I'm going to look at the one below, the group optional fee down here. If I were to click the shift button and down arrow key, I'll select it. The bottom width of this expression box will be lengthened. 
or be, be deeper, and then I shift up arrow key, and it will be narrow. Now, if you make it too narrow, I think you'll run out of space to show the data. Uh, no, it's still showing the data in there. But you've got to be careful about making it. You've got that, that's real estate land to, to build your expression on, and you've got to get enough space to work with. Okay, there's, uh, we've introduced one expression there. Uh, let me get to this one here, namer NMID. And again, this was one of another one of Chuck's favorite uh, functions. And let's take a look at it in the help guide because the namer uh, function allows you to include the first name, last name, middle name, salutation, and suffix in one string with just uh, two elements, the ID of the record and then a number, 0, 1, 2, 3, 5, or 8. That determines the format. So again, by changing the number, you can automatically set up the format. So if this format, three, I believe, is last name first. So it's, no, I take that back. That must be the name with no middle initial. So if we were to just edit this, we double click to edit. I'm going to remove the parameter on the function to just say namer. Redo that, and yeah, now that includes the uh, middle initial of the person, and if we had a salutation, Dr. Mr. Senator, it would have been Senator space Barack H. Obama, and I'm not going to listen to people who want me to put president yet, premature, premature. And so we'll now try the other main use of this is to flip-flop this. If you add a comma number two on Namer, it is last name, first name. So we go, whoops, let's check that again. Oh, I don't know if you can see that, but instead of typing a comma, I typed a period, and it doesn't like that. And incidentally, that is a good uh, illustration, a uh, serendipitous one. I was editing the report. I did a page preview, Control-I. It threw an error, but when I closed the error, it put me, the report writer is, is a good teacher because it puts you at the spot you make an error. And so it says, there's something wrong with this, Chucker, fix it. So I look at it, pay attention, and I note that instead of a comma, which is what you need, I typed a period. My bad. I'm going to edit that, put in a, period, a comma, and now let's preview. Ah, much better. So now we have Obama, Barack, Scott, Cheryl, Havlicek, Chuck. Again, that is a great tool. Now here's an example over on the right. I double clicked on this expression, and here we have an expression of the city, state, and zip. And you'll note it has all kinds of pluses and minuses and elements in it. Um, I'm going to show you how we'll do that same thing in one um, actually two letters there with using our scissor function. <clears throat> so in order to really illustrate this, I need to give us some room to show more information. So I'm going to click on the group header and I'm going to make it uh, deeper so I'll have more space to work with. To change the height of a group header, you click in the, the group header band and drag down or up to make it uh, deeper or to basically allow more room. So I'm going to make now another function using the city state zip function. And this is one where I think I'll have a better example with our CSVR function, scissor. And so here is our example, uh, scissor RGID. I'll copy that, go back to manager. I have to make a expression box and I'm going to paste it. All right, now let's see if that works. I'll drop that down. And there it is. And uh-oh, what happened? McFarlane, uh, well, everybody told me the answer. I need to make the box wider. So I will make it wider. And now we look at that, and we have the same description, but we've done it. We've got the city, state, and zip, but we've done it with two letters rather than five or six plus quotes and commas and having to hold our tongue right. So we can actually delete this one 
and we'll drag this up and drop it up to the top. Um, this is a formatting one, but you'll note it. I'm having difficulties because the alignment is not quite pretty. I'm a little bit off on my alignment. Well, I could click on it and drag and drop it up and down, and that's kind of, you know. Or if you click once on the object, you can let go of the mouse. You'll have to trust me on this. And just use your up and down arrow key. So now I'm moving the arrow key one click at a time. And the beauty of that is that that will keep perfect vertical alignment, but it will just move it up and down. Now I'm going to give you a preview of next week when we talk about aesthetics. If you have a series of objects on a line and you want to make them lined up right, what you can do is select the objects one by one. Um, and I guess this is a good time to talk about how do you select objects. The pointer tool is, is, is in play. And when I select an object, I want to select this one. And whoop, it unselected the other one. Well, I want to add this one. Whoop, it unselected the other one. Well, to select multiple objects, hold the shift key down. And you can, I, say, I hit control. Uh, shift key, and now I've got one, two, three, four, five elements. And now I have all five of these elements selected. And now I can perform some action on them as a group. Uh, what I want to do now is do the layout toolbar. You'll note when I click on it, it pops into the middle of my form. I don't like that. I want to drag my toolbar and dock it so I know where to find it. Now the layout toolbar allows me to align the edges of different parts of my report. Well, either the top or the bottom, since they're the same size. Bottom edges, ka -ching, They're now perfectly aligned. Let's undo that. And let's say, well, maybe I wanted to align the top edges, since that's really where I'm going. And now they are all perfectly in a straight line. Well, let's undo that. And I'm going to click and deselect these after I've worked so hard to select that group of five individual objects. Another way to select a group of elements on a report to do one action with is to lasso them. If I wanted to do the header, all three of the items in the header here, and change the font, I could control click, control click, or shift click, shift click. Or I could click the mouse, drag and drop a lasso around all of the elements I wish to include, and I've selected all of those now. We could do the same thing on this group down here. You move your mouse outside one of the objects, click and bring it across until it touches all the things you want to include. Now I missed this one, so I have to shift click. And now I've selected all of those items, well, at least four out of the five. And we'll realign them, and we're good to go. Now. Formatting uh, real quickly. This comes in next week's webinar, but since many of you may want to start right away, um, if I wanted to make all of these elements the same font size or change the font, I've got them all selected. I can go to Format, Font, and now I can change the font from bold or regular to italic, change the size, change the, the style of the font, so if I wanted to make this all bold italic, why, I don't know. But now I have all of these items bold and italic. One thing to note, obviously, if you're talking about spacing, that uh, when you change the font sizes, that you may have an issue with uh, spacing. And so you have, you've got to be aware of that. We'll test that just to prove that we bold-faced everything. OK, how are we doing, Lori? Any burning questions that relate to what we're doing? Yes. Go back to uh, Namer there, please. And when you put in an option two, right. people want to know, does that change the sort order? Uh, the sort order? Yes. This has nothing to do with sort order. I, I, and again, what this does is change the way the name looks on the page. This is just a cosmetic thing. Sort order, uh, we have, we've done nothing to address the sort order behind the report. To do that with a, with, a, with a roster report, you would have to put in a just do it. Thank okay? you. That should answer that but question. Again, 
Namer, the 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 the, uh, the number options after Namer are the layout of the um, of the name, not the uh, of how the name appears in that box, not any sort order in the report itself. Very okay. good. Anything else? Uh, no, I think that's it. Okay. Um, all right. So we've been fiddling with the fonts, font fiddling. Here's that show phone function that was one of my favorites. And again. Uh, let's add the phone number, even though it's already there. Let's put the phone number in native and see what it looks like. Well, I could do that by clicking on the field element, drag and dropping a box because I know the field name. But suppose I did it. So what we'll do is look at the um, environment tool. Uh, when you are, and well, let's do that. Uh, I will get back to that again. If I were to add this field and I would say, well, Chuck said I could press the little ellipsis. Well, when you press that, the very first time on a report, there's nothing in the fields area. It's blank. Okay, why is that? Well, before you can use that ellipsis in the report expression box, you have to click on the report environment to build the different elements that this report covers. So we'll click on it once. You may get a property setting message and just click OK through that. This gives us, in rosters, two rows. Pick one. It doesn't make any difference which one. I like to drag and drop it so that I see more elements on the field. But this is your ingredient list. If you remember anything about the previous webinars, we've told you that for every given report area, ACEWARE provides you a set of stock fields or ingredients in this report. These are the stock fields that come when you're doing a name roster. You'll note at the beginning we talked about the first two digits of the report. So the CO references course, LO references location, RU registration user defined, et cetera, et cetera. Now we're looking for the field uh, phone number. And it is from the name record, so we're looking for NM, and we go down, 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 and now we're getting to the name information. And we see NMD phone uh, right there. Okay, so to add that to the report then, we can just click on it, drag and drop it, and it will appear on that report. Uh, when I'm done, and if I wanted to do more, I said, well, I wanted to include the country. I could, cl uh, well, county, uh, what do we got here? Well, let's put something that's not there yet. Uh, let's put the email address, and we'll stick that about right here. Uh, and we could continue to add drag and drop elements on there. Well, I'm, go I'm done, so I'm going to close this. As we mentioned, when you drag and drop, it brings over the label or the uh, the actual field name along with the expression of the contents of that field. Most of the time you're going to delete that. So to delete an element, you select it and just hit the delete key. And it's gone. Now I need to move my email over so it's not sitting on top of the other piece. There again is the phone number label. Let's see what it looks like. <coughs> so. Here we have, uh, boy, not many emails on this particular one, but we have the day phone label, and there is the day phone. Well, you'll note the day phone natively has no dashes, no spaces. It's all jammed together, which isn't very readable. Okay, so we're going to delete this, and we're going to delete this. Look at show phone. The show phone function will basically, if you give the show phone function a parameter of a field in student manager that has a phone, day phone, home phone, fax phone, <coughs> it will format it out nicely. And we will do that, uh, take a look at it again, and it's nicely formatted. Well, I don't have a header across a form that tells me what this uh, actually is, whether it's day or um, you know, day or home. There are two ways to address that. One is that you could click the, uh, you could go up to the toolbar, click the text box, and type in a text label above this particular area. So we would type in day phone, 
at the top of the page header, and when we review that, it would show a, a, a label on this column of day phone. Now, the other way to do it, which, and I'm going to get rid of that, I'll select it and hit the delete key. The other way to do it is that the show phone function offers you an option to, where's show phone, that if you pass a second parameter, <clears throat> you can actually label that phone in the middle of the report. So anything you put in quotation marks as a second parameter will appear uh, in addition to the phone number. So let's see what that does. So here's a perfect example of what we want, show phone day. So we'll just copy that, go back to our report, double click and paste in the element from our help file. Take a look at that, and now it adds the word day, semicolon, space, the phone number. So again, that is a nice feature with the show phone function. Okay, uh, let's see, back to, now I need to check my notes. Lori, tell me if there's anything that needs to be, a fire that needs to be addressed. Yeah, I have somebody that says that on this report here. Uh, Bobby Anderson is one, and Tom Aspartain is two. How do they get it to go one, two, three? <laughs> it's always doing one. <clears throat> okay, now you're talking intermediate report writing. But again, this is uh, an example. If we were to just count these records, if we counted every time the name appeared, uh, let's see how this works. We're going to make a field and just show you. This is uh, worth discussing. We're going to put in the, uh, the name ID field, and we're going to say, we're going to calculate and count that. And we want to wait to the end of the report. When we look at that, there is zero, two, three, four, five. Now, obviously, and that's working for me. Way to go. We put that in the option area. Let's try our GID and see if our GID, if that covers it any better. Uh, there we go. So we have, you know, the idea, if we just counted the number of rows in this report, we'd have one, two, three, four, and we're off count because the counting, there are more rows in the report than there are names. When you're doing elements with um, a, a report that has a detail level that is finer than what you want to count. So remember we said the detail level in name roster was fees, not the number of individual names. So what you have to do is create variables. And that's basically a discussion again for next week. But we go to report variables, and we have to make uh, two sets of variables that we use <clears throat> in determining when to count a name and when is it a duplicate name. And again, that's why, again, if you were doing this in Deadbeat, <clears throat> if you didn't need the optional fees, you could actually create a roster in Deadbeat and just count the names because the number would always be one name per um, you know, one row per name per registration. Other questions here? That was really kind of cheating for next week, or week after next. This is rather going back to basics, but I've had enough questions that I think it bears uh, talking about. Folks want to know if you're running Student Manager twice, that you're getting your help file, and you have the report designer open. Uh, uh, read me that again. They want to know if you're running Student Manager twice, because you have your help files open. Right. And you have your uh, report designer open. But what you've got oh, is your Oh, well, help let, let, me, let me show you what's open here. I'm going to do Shift-Tab, which allows me to show what's open. I have Student Manager open. I have the report designer open in a separate screen. Once you launch the report designer, now I'm running it off the local file, but if you're running it off the web, what you'd have is a web browser open with the help file, and you can have that open indefinitely while you're running Student Manager in a separate window. So uh, uh, again, um, let me let me go back to there's the Student Manager help guide. I'm going to hit Escape to close this. So on my toolbar, I have 
the PowerPoint running, I have student manager that report, uh, my, my student manager, and then I've got the student manager help guide. They're in separate sessions. So, no, I only have one student manager, but I ran the report writer or the report help, and rather than uh, close it, I just left it open. So we're back to report writer. If I wanted to launch the report help, um, it's whether that's going to the help, it's not wanting to load. But you can run the help independently of running your report. So hopefully that, that's been answered. Any other questions? Mm, that's about it for right okay. now. Okay. All right. Now let's get back to, again, I was going to my notes and the question came up, uh, the, the, the lock tool. Um, let's go back to our example. And let's get back to our PowerPoint and get our show going again. We want a name roster that shows gender, age, and county in landscape. Okay, so let's get back to this report writer. We've been kind of showing other elements of it, which are good. Um, we're going to, uh, we want to, where is my mouse again? Mouse, come back to me. And I managed to close the report. No, I don't want to discard the changes. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm going to change our date, get that back to the way it was. Okay, uh, as I mentioned at the very beginning, when you are working with a report, you generally don't ever start from zero. What you want to start with, or you're starting with the base set of data and then you add to that. If the only thing we want is the name, gender, age, and I forget one other thing, what we're going to do is select everything down in here and dump it, except for the name. So I'm going to make a lasso, drag it around everything on this report. Now I'm going to deselect the name, and I'm going to deselect the count. Everything else now that is selected when I hit delete goes away. Okay. So now let's get back to what it is that we're trying to do. I'm closing up all the detail bands. Now, if I were to run this just the way it is right now, we should have a list of names, one after the other, one, two, three, or five. Um, and you'll note wait lists were showing because I said in the preference I wanted to show wait list people. Now, we need to add the uh, fields from, we want a gender and age, and I forget one other thing. So let's go down to the name data and we're looking for sex, which is gender, and we're looking for age. Well, we've got the birth date, so we'll put that up in here. And let's see what we've got. So we preview that uh, male, and we've got a birthday. Well, we didn't really want birthday. We wanted the age. Uh, so rather than using birth itself, we can use the age function. And what the age function does is that you add the word, we're going to put type the function in. If you put in the age function and pass it a, um, a, a date field, it will tell you how many years from this date uh, today is. So from today, this is the age of the people in that particular report. And Mr. Obama, we know he's a youngin, but we didn't get his birth date. So that this is how you use the age function in a report. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go back, because I can't remember now, what we wanted. The gender, the age, and the county. Okay, so I didn't mean to do that. Let's go back to, we're going to add county. Well, I'm going to use the other tool, which is the AB tool. I will click on this. I'm going to drag and drop an expression box. Now, if I knew the field, I could type it in here. If I wanted to cheat, I would click on the expression, and now you'll see down here that the fields have been filled in because we have clicked on the environment tool. So I could go down through here and find the field. I said, oh, well, I don't remember the name. How did Chuck spell county when he made those databases? Well, here's a job for the help system. So 
we're going to go to screen layout. We're going to go to the name screen. And we're looking for county. And we click on it. And it, there it is, NM County. And I believe we should be able to copy that. Control C, get back to our report designer. Control V, paste in the field. So again, that is hopefully worth the price of admission, folks, uh, that you learned how to use that help file to get you your report. And so now we have the gender, the age, and we have the county that they're from. So I'm going to take a breather and see if there are questions about what we've done there. On my system, Chuck, that built very slowly. So if you could go back through to the help system and oh, show for again, the, my um, screens didn't build quick enough to see what was going on there. OK. Uh, this is where I left it. Is, and uh, let me get back to it. Um, that if you click on the actual field name, county, uh, it will bring up a, a, a call out box that has the actual field name, hopefully spelled correctly, and that if you wish to copy that to paste into your field, you can just copy it and highlight it and do your um, right mouse click copy, <clears throat> and that will, uh, will let you copy that. Or you could make a note, OK, that's county. Go back, OK, you ready? You caught up, Lauren? Yep. OK, we go back to the report designer, and we, I'll delete it and start over again. We go to the field element, drag and drop a box, and now we could click on the ellipsis and then scroll down here until we found NM County in the list of fields. Uh, and, oh, that's country. Again, got to be careful. Country and county are pretty close. <clears throat> but we're looking for NM County. But as you note there, uh, county must be up above there. All right. So I would have been better off. That was county right there. I just didn't go high enough. Double click on it. It puts it in the expression. And it's it's in there. OK. Um, I want to do one more example on, on courses. Um, but uh, any burning questions popping right now? Yep. Uh, are the bands already named when you come into the reporting area? Um, well, again, let's go back to the point number one. When you go to a report, somebody has built bands for you. So yes, every report you go into will have some kind of bands. Now, in this case, you'll note there is no title band or summary band. Um, I don't know how you'd want it in rosters, but if you did, you would go to report and be able to say, edit the bands. Whoops, cancel that. Uh, where's our report tools? Header, footer, band. Oh, optional bands. Oh, here we go, optional bands. So we could add a title band or a summary band to this report. Let me go back to that and make sure, because I don't do this very often. Optional bands is where you go to, if you don't have a title or a summary band on a report, <clears throat> that you can click to be able to add a title band or summary band to a report. Um, I had a thought, and I wanted to get back to it. Um, other questions, Lori? Nope. Don't think so. Okay. I think we're good. Well, we, we've kind of gone through the editing. Let's come out of this and... Um, oh, when we're done editing the report, we previewed it. It's done the way we want. Um, I'll be, uh, let's go to File, Close. It asks if you want to save what you've done, and we've worked so hard, absolutely. And now we have the option to save the report. And again, we want to save it as a optional report or additional report. We don't want to save it as a default. So I click in the title, and I'm going to say Webinar example. And then I'd want to put in my notes what I did. Name only and uh, sex B-Day county. Done. And I've, I've got it in there. So that is my report. 
Um, let's, uh, we said, whoops, you know what? We didn't set that to portrait or to landscape. Um, I'm going to do deadbeat since that's my favorite report. We're going to modify the default deadbeat report. And we're going to change it from, for the 08 year, we're going to change this report to landscape. So this is my report. You'll note it's eight and a half inches wide across the top. To do the format of the page, um, the page setup tool is what you click. And it then gives you a layout tool. And, and again, uh, let 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 me let me make sure to reiterate. In the help guide, there is a major set of report tools that deal with the whole area of modifying reports. Look at all that stuff. So again, most everything that we've covered here today is in the help guide under modifying reports, so that you've got the reference as to where to get this. So page setup. Uh, we're at the first screen. If you click on page setup, it gives you the portrait or landscape option. And it also gives you the ability to change paper size if you are running some special formatted paper. So we'll make this landscape. We hit the OK button. And now it's, voila, we now have a landscape page so that when we preview it, we are in landscape mode rather than in page mode. Okay, so we'll close, save it, and we'll say default landscape. And we don't need to put a note because that's what we did. Okay, one more report example, and then we'll try to get into some closing, and that is a report of upcoming classes showing if it is a new class and the web published status. We actually had one of these with a client yesterday. So we're going to go to Courses CE Reports, and I'm going to see what additional reports we might have that might be close to what we're looking for. Well, there's upcoming course, upcoming course list. Well, let's just see the default. We'll modify hit the OK button. Uh, we're going to look at our 2008 courses because we want to run a list. And now this is the course CEU report set up. And let's see what this includes. It has a course no number, begin date, the title, the hours CEUs enrolled, hours, uh, hours generated. Well, we don't want CEUs and we don't want that stuff. So we're going to delete it. We can either select and hit delete or use our mouse, select multiple items and delete and get rid of the stuff we don't want. And we want to add the value of a new course. So we'll get rid of our subtotals because we don't want subtotals on this. We want the value of a new course. So we'll use our expression box click on it, and we want new course. Uh-oh, we forgot to click data environment. We have nothing in here. Well, two choices. Um, we can click on our environment. We noted we have three that pop up. Go in here and see whether or not we have the new course, the, the, the field in here. And I know it happens to be called co-new. So we're looking for co-new, co-new. By golly, there it is. We click on it, drag and drop, and there it is. Um, well, uh, the other field we're looking for is the field that indicates the web published properties. Boy, I don't even know what that field name is. So what do we do? We call for help. And this would be a call for this screen layout helper. Course screen. We'll wait for it to come up. Lori, you see me now? Can you see me now? Yes, I do. We're going to click on the Ace Web tab. And we're going to look at the published properties. Well, the little bubble pop-up says CoWeb Reg. And it's numeric. So that's the field we're looking for. I'm going to copy it this time. Copy. Right mouse click Copy. Minimize this. 
And now we're going to make an element, field, paste it in, and now let's see if it will run. Control I, and it says rut row, variable co web reg not found. Well, what happens? Uh, and, and this is a, a live, a real case, is that if you've got a report that gives you everything you need except that you're missing a particular element, what you can do is use one of my favorite functions, which is add course. Uh, so we go back to help. We go to our function list. And the add course allows you to add a field from the course table. And what you need to do is give it two parameters. You give it the course number of the record that you're, of what you're looking for, and then in quotation marks, you put the name of the field that you want it to return. So I'll copy this. Go back to my report. I'm going to paste it to the left because I want to cheat. And I'm going to set it up so that I get co-web reg. We have co-course, co-web reg. Now it's getting kind of tight. If you're working with an expression that's kind of big, if you click the ellipsis, it gives you a full uh, window to work with. So now I need to add an end quote and end parens. And at this point, we'll run our report. And we'll see we have a 0, 0, 0, 6, 6, 0, 0. And that's our, um, our web published properties. OK, we have run out of 90 minutes here. I'm going to uh, You have one uh, question you need to pardon. address. Pardon? You have one question you need to address. You started off with the lock icon. The which one? The lock. Oh, the lock tool on the controls. On the controls, yep, and never said what it was for. You said what there it, was it is. For. Okay, yep. uh, yeah, let's let's go back to that. Um, the the lock element is one that allows you if you want to go to one mode. Suppose I wanted to add labels across the top of this. When I go to hit a label, and I wanted to say this is new, and then I wanted to click over here and type uh, web publish, you only get one insert. Per click, so I'd have to click back to this and type "web publish," and maybe I wanted to go over and change this to title to say "course name." So I click, I, I click, I, I can't, I can't get to edit. I've got, oops, pardon me, I have to go back and click label again so I can get into edit mode. What the lock option does is that when you select one of these tools. It will let you lock that tool in place, just like a caps lock or shift lock tool on your keyboard. So now that I've clicked button lock, I'm going to be in label mode in the tools until I unlock the button. So now, if I wanted to put in a subtitling here, I click once, label, label one. Now, Label 1. I'm going to click over here and type Label 2. So I don't have to go back and re-click A again. I can edit, click on this, Edit Title. So that is what the, the lock button does. If you're using one of these tools and you need to make a bunch of them, uh, you click on the element. So now I'm going to click Line. I'm in lock mode, and I can draw lines. Wherever I want to, I don't have to reselect the lines again. And then when I'm done, I hit unlock, and now I can go back and for every one click, if I go to text, um, I type the text, and when I move, it resets back to pointer. It basically avoids having to reset back to the individual element if you're wanting to uh, work with uh, one item for several things. Okay. Oh, uh, guys, you've been very good. I hope this has been useful. These are my Fab Five reports. And again, in the sense of things that should give you a lot of basic tools to work from for uh, reporting. Uh, the deadbeat for registration level, the mailing label for info if you're looking for one record per name kind of things, cash box to do your income reporting, course CEU reports for like additional reports, upcoming classes for lists of upcoming classes, 
and then the statistics report, name demographic summary. And again, we're not going to be able to cover all, but remember, you've got over 250 reports included in your student manager. So again, we went through, we've tried to review the table naming and the data structure, uh, giving you the report designer tool elements, run through functions, begin to do some examples of banding basics and left you with some of my Fab Five. So I hope this whirlwind tour has been useful. Um, again, the help is there with the uh, wonderful help tool that Cheryl has built. So <clears throat> get out there, ask questions, uh, look up the help, and uh, start cooking. So we'll stick around for a couple more minutes for questions as long as you want. But everybody else, you've been very attentive. I hope you've enjoyed it. and. Uh, We'll see you next week with aesthetics, making it look pretty here. Lori, what, what do we look like for questions and things that we can kind of wrap up here before we uh, let people take a break? I'm going to stop the recording. Okay. <laughs>